what should you expect for an average rate of return in your investment portfolio? Today we're going to talk about what it means to get an average rate of return and how rare it actually is to get what most consider a normal rate of return in the stock market. So I'm a financial planner, I've been doing this for over 20 years, and we deal with averages all the time. When you're building out financial plans and you're working on retirement planning, or retirement investment income, you're using a lot of average numbers. And in today's video, we're gonna spend some time digging into the averages and then give some longer term context so you can make better financial decisions. Okay, so what do most people think when they talk about the average rate of return in the stock market? Now, so for the stock market, most people think of the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the United States. We'll use those numbers because those are the most common. So going back almost 100 years, the average rate of return, if you look at this chart here, the average rate of return has been a little over 12%. Now, it's pretty high due to the recent run-up we've had over the last few years, but the average rate of return has been a little over 12%. Okay, so that's pretty good. Does that mean that you should expect around 12% in your portfolio every year? It absolutely does not mean that. And this is really where we're gonna spend a little bit of time. So that is the average. So you're gonna have some ups, you're gonna have some downs, but how big are the ups and how big are the downs and just how often do you get this 12% rate of return? Well, over the last 100 years, you've essentially never gotten a 12% rate of return. Well, how often are we close to getting that rate of return? Well, again, if you look at this chart and you go back for decades, the likelihood of you being within 5% in either direction of 12%, so in other words, 17 or seven positive rate of return is around one in seven years. So not only will you probably never hit your average rate of return, but most years, more than often, you won't even be close to getting your average rate of return. And so, okay, how much of a deviation or how far up and how far down should I expect? Well, the average, again, deviation, which means difference between your average and the rate of return, the average deviation, going back almost 100 years, is 18% which means if you think about that average rate of return, 10 to 12%, it's gonna be 18% higher or lower than that on average. And again, we keep talking in averages, which means sometimes you're way higher and sometimes you're way lower. And this is just the price that we pay when it comes to the stock market. We are not just signing up for a 10 or a 12 or an 8% rate of return year in and year out. You're signing up for the volatility, for the ups and the downs. That's the price you pay and what do you get in return? you get a higher rate of return than investing in things like cash and bonds over the long haul. But you have to deal with this short-term volatility. And the volatility, the ups and the downs, and that's why we're having this video, is not that big of a deal as long as you know what to expect. And so when I think, hey, I want an average rate of return of whatever, 8%, 10%, whatever you're putting in your financial plan for your stock market investments, while this is the long-term average, think 10 plus years average rate of return. This is not the experience that you will have year to year. And as long-term investors, as long as you know that's coming and the year, the up years don't get too excited and the down years don't get too upset, you can be a better long-term investor. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, thanks for investing your time with the personal CFO.